Welcome back. We're now going to talk about Forex quotes and just give a, a good, solid, you know, nooks and crannies look into what exactly is uh, a Forex quote, but really, really more so just a quote because once you understand what a quote is, then it really is applicable to the stock market, to the options market, you know, to any of these other markets out there. So yes, we're gonna focus on the Forex quote itself, but you know, the good thing here is that if you understand what a quote is just in general, then it can be applied to any sort of market, you know, that you're looking at. Now, before we dig into the market itself, I do need to, to fess up here, and this is probably not the best way to start off this whole you know new presentation, but I did lie to you in the last video, but for good reason, so hopefully you don't you know pause the button and you're not typing me up an email right now, you little lying scumbag, give me my money back. Just let me try to explain myself, and hopefully you'll see that uh, you know when I was talking about currency pairs, the numbers and all that that I was using, that was just to illustrate that point at that point in time. But now, let's pull back a few layers, and let's get a little bit more detailed. So the first lie that I did was, you know, I just used one number for the exchange rate, when in reality, the exchange rate is actually made up of two numbers. The second lie was in regards to the decimal places. In my example, you know, I used that 1.47. Well, let's go through a quick review here, just in case, what, wait, what decimal places? I remember hearing that someplace. So decimal places, you have a number, and then you have that period, which is known as a decimal point. And then everything here to the right of that are the decimal places. So like I said in the video from, or in the previous video's example, I used two decimal places. It was one point and then four, seven. In all reality though, in the Forex market, there are more decimal places where it can go up to, you know, four and even five decimal places, you know, into an actual exchange rate. So I did lie there too, but we're gonna tackle both of these and get everything cleared up so there's no more any more lies or deceit. So let's first talk about this whole two number thing. And the two number thing goes back to the, the keyword there being a market, because that's what a quote is telling us. It's telling us about the market in a very efficient manner. And the market, or that brings up the question, well, who exactly makes up a market? Well, the good news here is there's only two entities. You have a buyer and you have a seller. Whether it is the stock market, the options market, or the grocery store market, there's always gonna be a buyer and a seller. For example, you walk into Walmart because you need to buy some bananas. Who in that situation is gonna be the seller? Well, the seller is gonna be Walmart itself. Who is gonna be the buyer in that market? It's gonna be you. You wanna buy bananas, so you as the buyer are gonna go and buy from the seller, Walmart, to get those bananas. It could be you sitting around with a bunch of buddies, you know, doing baseball cards, you know, exchanging them in one way or the other. Again, if there's an exchange happening, then you need a buyer and you need a seller. So there's markets all over the place. And when you have buyers and sellers, that's what makes up a market in and of itself. But the quote, like I said, is what kind of swoops in is our knight in shining armor and takes all this information about the market and then just puts it in an efficient manner and that way simplifies it in a sense of, okay, here are the buyers and here are what the buyers are willing to pay. Okay, here are the sellers and here are what the sellers are willing to sell for. And then from there, you can make decisions and it's just summarizing what's going on within a very complex market, you know, which the Forex or any of those big markets are going to be very complex. There's lots of entities, there's lots of people, and the quote is coming in to just summarize it all in an efficient manner. In as far as the quote, you know, good trader lingo, quote lingo, there's two key terms, the bid and then the ask or the offer. You can see it, you know, call it either or. The bid, and this is what I like about this, is you know, I really have impressed myself with this one. I come up, I came up with this quick trick, and the nice thing is because there's only two entities, then if you can figure out a quick for or a quick trick for one of them, then by process of elimination, you know, you know what the other one is. So, you know, what I would recommend and what I find easy is just the B's. Bid, buyers. So therefore, like I said, by process of elimination, if you know that the bid is where the buyers are hanging out, well then the ask and offer has gotta be where the sellers in the market are hanging out. So, so let's dig into the bid a little bit more, and it, it's not rocket science by any stretch of the imagination, you just gotta really kinda stop and think about it. So the bid, the bid is what? Well, that is where the buyers are hanging out. So in what way do buyers influence the different approaches to the market? There's two approaches to the market. You can either go long, buy, or you can sell short. So buyers, where do they fit in both of those? Well, let's first just start by selling short. If you want to enter into a trade from the short side, if you wanna quote unquote sell short, the first thing you gotta do is sell. So 
What do you need to do in order to sell? Well, you need buyers. And where are the buyers found? Well, they're found on the bid. So from the short perspective, if you want to enter into a trade, then the bid is the highly likely area that's gonna allow you to initiate that trade. Because again, well, that's where the buyers are hanging out. What about from the long side? If you have already bought and you own, in this case, you know, the Forex, if, if you are already an owner and now you wanna get out, what do you need? You already own, you have to get out. Well, you need, once again, somebody that's willing to buy from you. Because you wanna get out, you need to sell that to somebody else. So again, well, where are the buyers at? Well, they're at the bid. So from the long perspective, the bid is the highly likely area where that's gonna allow you to exit out of the trade. Because again, in order to exit, after you've already bought, you need buyers. Because, well, I gotta, I gotta sell this to somebody. So you need buyers to exit out and that's where the bid comes into play. Now, what about on the flip side? The ask and the offer. Now, a quick way to just kind of remember that is, you know, maybe you're trying to sell something on eBay or you know, uh, you know, Craigslist or anything, and somebody may ask you, "Hey, how much are you asking for that? Are you, are, you know, are you willing to? Bring, what, what are you offering?" Well, if somebody says, "What are you asking in regards to something you're selling?" I would assume that most people are like, "Okay, I know what they mean." When they're asking me, "What am I asking?" They're thinking, "Translation: What am I selling it for? What am I willing to sell it for?" So, same with the offer. What are you offering? Well, I'm offering to sell it for fill in the blank. So that is where the sellers in the market are because that is the, you know, those numbers are what telling you people are willing to sell whatever it is for, whether it's a baseball card, a Forex exchange, or you know, a sack of marbles. So again, let's kind of do this whole little think experiment here. Who needs sellers? What role does a seller play in the market? Well, from the short side, the sellers are very important when you're looking to exit because if you want to move out of the trade, then you're gonna need sellers to help you exit out of the trade. Remember, quick review, when you want to exit out of a short trade, you sell second. So in order to do that, you're gonna to need to find the sellers. And again, where are the sellers at? They're up on the offer or the ask. So short side is the highly likely area, or the offer is gonna be the highly likely area that you can exit out of a short side trade. Now on the flip side, if you want to enter into a long trade, if you wanna buy, well, what do you need as a buyer? Well, you need sellers. So again, as far as an entry is concerned, because you wanna buy, therefore you need sellers. Where are the sellers located at? They're located on the offer. That's gonna be the highly likely area for you to enter into a long position. I promise, if, if you just look at those, and like I said, do the, the, the think tank experiment where you just think and say, all right, what role does a buyer play in both entry for a short and exit for a short? What role you know, does the offer play in both an entry for a long and an exit for a long? And you know, the, the picture lines up, so it's nothing that needs to be overthunk. You know, I was questioning, do I really need to put these things in here? Because I don't wanna confuse people. But you know, it, like I said, just stop and think about it, and it makes perfect sense. But at the end of the day, you really don't need to think that hard about it because just remember, the bid is where the buyers are at, the ask offer is where the sellers are at in the market. It's really as simple as that. This should make a lot and just kind of bring things clearer. Let's look at some actual numbers. So a Forex quote still going with the Euro dollar is gonna look like this. Over here, we would have our bid. Over here, we would have our ask or the offer. So let's have a little quiz right here. If you believe that the euro is going to strengthen, what is the price for the highly likely entry? Again, if you believe that the euro is going to strengthen in comparison to the US dollar, think back, this is review from the last video, then what is the price for a highly likely entry? So I'll give you a second to pause it. All right, welcome back. So let's just break this down. You think that the euro is going to strengthen. In other words, you think that the exchange rate is going to increase in price. So if you think that the exchange rate is going to increase in price or increase in value, I should say, what do you wanna do? Well, you wanna buy. So we wanna get a highly likely area. So we gotta ask ourselves, all right, well, we wanna buy. So where are the sellers at in this marketplace? Where are the sellers at and what value are they willing to sell for? So if you said, well, if you want the highly likely entry, 
to buy to go long and you said that, perfect. Why? Because again, if you think the euro is going to strengthen, then that means you think that the exchange rate value is gonna go up. If you think something is gonna go up, you wanna buy. So how are you gonna buy? How are you gonna get that highly likely entry? Well, you need to locate, hey, where are the sellers at if you wanna buy? And the sellers are sitting right up there at 1.02582. So good job. Another question though. Next, so let's say if you believe the euro is going to weaken, then what is the price for a highly likely entry? So again, I will allow you to pause. So welcome back. Now again, let's just break this down. So you think that the euro is going to weaken compared to the US dollar, which means you think the exchange rate value is going to weaken, you know, go down. So how can we make money in the markets when values are going down? Well, we have to short. What is the first thing that you need to do as a short to initiate the position, to initiate the trade? Well, in shorting, you sell first. All right, so we now need to sell first. So if we wanna sell, where are the buyers at? Well, in this case, if you said, well, because we need buyers and because the buyers hang out on the bid and because the bid is valued at 1.02571, then good job, you got that one right and you went through a big sequence of knowledge of understanding how all these pieces are starting to come together. Again, just one more time, you thought the euro was going to weaken, therefore you are saying that I think the exchange rate value is gonna go down. You wanna profit from that. So how do we profit from exchange rate values that go down? Well, we have to short. What do you do to initiate a short-sided trade? Well, you need to sell first. What do we need in order to sell? Well, we need buyers. Where are the buyers hanging out at? Well, they're hanging out at the bid. What is the bid's value? So that's how we arrive right at that value. If you need to, you know, feel free to rewind that back and go through the sequence there. But you know, hopefully it's, it's kind of like, all right, yeah, I get that, that all makes sense. Let's now move on to the next bit of lingo, you know, if you wanna sound cool, and that is the spread. One of these terms where I remember when I was new, I, I kept hearing it, I'm like, the spread, what? What are they talking about the spread? Well, spread, the good news is, is you hear it a lot, but it, it's super, super just straightforward. There is definitely no rocket science behind it, as it is simply just the difference between the bid and the ask. So up in our example here, the quick little, you know, basic, basic math here. If you wanna find the difference between these two numbers, then all you gotta do is, you know, subtract that one away from that one, and then that's gonna equal the spread. And that's all it is. The spread is just simply the difference between what people are willing to buy for, cough, cough, the bid, and what people are, are willing to sell for, cough, cough, the ask. Now, a general rule of thumb, which is very, you know, very important, is that, you know, the bigger the spread, the bigger the risk. So that's something that, to keep in mind a lot of times, maybe Forex, when, when brokers, one of their main sales pitches is, hey, we have really tight spreads. Our spreads are only you know, X amount of distance. The reason they're talking about that is because they want you to know that, hey, we're not some you know, broker that's giving you a bunch of unnecessary risk because our spreads are super big. We'll get into more of that later, but as it stands right now, just understand that the, the, the bigger the risk, or excuse me, the bigger the reward, the bigger the risk. So as long as you keep that in mind, you know, that's all that you need to go going forward. But yeah, again, quiz question, you know, what is the spread? Well, it's just simply the difference between the bid and the ask. So now that you understand the whole two numbers of an actual value of an exchange rate, let's address this other lie that I kind of threw in your face. And that is that these decimal places are more than just the two that you originally saw in the last video. I would assume that you've probably already kind of noticed, holy crap, look at those, that's a lot of numbers there all of a sudden, as we went through, you know, talking about the bid and the offer with some real numbers. So this is very, you know, like I said, I realize that for you math people out there, you have the tenths and the thousandths and the 10,000 and all that sort of stuff, but that's unnecessary. I invest in real estate, so my, my mind operates better looking at topics from, you know, just a real estate perspective. And in real estate, you know, real estate 101, so you're gonna get a little bonus here in terms of real estate investing. It's all about location, location, location. Wherever the loca location is in real estate, you know, that's gonna, you know, make a big difference. So when it comes to exchange rates, there are up to five different locations. So yes, an exchange rate has real estate, a part of it with those five various locations. Now the big thing here is that the vast majority of brokers are gonna assume the first three locations are the same when they're gonna give you an exchange rate quote. So wait, what's a quote again? Bid versus ask, when they're gonna give you those numbers. But due to the vast amount of liquidity, as we've already talked about, yeah, it does take quite a bit for a value of an exchange rate to, to, to move. Now they do move, yes, but like I said, 
most brokers, because of you know the amount that it takes something to move, they're just assuming that those first three real estate locations are the same. So you know, in our example, we have our five locations here, yes, but then as far as the broker's concerned, it's just gonna assume that these three are the same. And we'll look at some actual examples of what I mean by this. Uh, but sometimes if you're not aware of that they're making this assumptions, then the numbers just look super goofy when you're looking at the quote and you're thinking, wait, what? what is going on? But if you understand that there's some assuming going on, then the quotes are gonna make a whole lot more sense. So yes, numbers on a, a, a slide can only go so far. So let's actually look at a few different Forex quotes. Now these are just random screenshots I found from across the internet because like I said, all platforms uh, are gonna be different because all brokers are gonna have various little platforms. So I, I don't wanna just look at one sort of platform because the one that you choose may look at things a little differently. So my logic here is let's look at a few different varieties and that way you can see kind of, because they're all telling us the same exact thing, it's just a matter of how are they displaying this from a visual perspective. So what we'll use is just to go along with our theme, we'll look at the currency pair. So here's a quote and right off the bat, you now know that they're looking at the Euro dollar. Some will have you know, the, the slash in there. In this case, obviously the first thing to note is that there is no slash, they just put it all right there. So Forex quote right from the get go before it even tells us really what the quote is, it's telling us what currency pair is it talking about? What marketplace is it You know, just adding a sense of efficiency to? So first part is in this case, maybe you notice that these two numbers are very big. So why are they focused on those two numbers? Well, going back to the whole assumption thing on the previous slide, you can see that they're just gonna assume that these two numbers are the same. So 1.34 the same, 1.34 the same. A lot of brokers do assume that, like I said, that third number is the same. And in this case, it is the same. You can see that the two and the two here is once again the same. So I'm, you know, and like I said, this is just how brokers do it. They're all gonna be a little bit different. But what this is telling us is it's still giving us the bid and the offer. The bid is always gonna be on the left side. The offer is always gonna be on the right side. So the actual quote here is 1.34234 by 1.34250. The key decimal point areas, the key real estate locations though, are right here. So when we get to pips, you know that'll make more sense, but just notice that where these numbers are at, it is what real estate location is this? It is there's one, there's two, there's three, and there's four. Keep that four number in your mind. Again, over here, there's one, or excuse me, there's one, there's two, there's three, real estate location number four right here. So these are the numbers that we're gonna really care about later on as we work through the rest of this video. But keep that in mind, there's a reason why those are you know big and focused on the quotes. I would imagine that you know some brokers probably offer you the, the choice if you want all these numbers to be big or if you just want certain real estate locations to stick out. But you know that's essentially what's going on right here. If you look right here, this is what we've been talking about earlier. So if you want to enter into the Euro dollar, if you want to enter in right now from the long side, what do you need to do? Well, long side, you have to buy first. So wh where would you buy it? Where would you find bu buyers? Well, you would find buyers, or you would, you would need to buy from people that are willing to sell. So that's why over here, where the offer is, that's why it says buy, because this is where the sellers are. So if you want to buy, you could buy right there. You know click that buy button right there, it's gonna give you that price. On the flip side, if you wanna go short, first thing you need to do is sell. So if you're looking to sell, what do you need? Well, you need buyers. Where are the buyers hanging out? The buyers are hanging out over here on the bid. So that's why you can sell right here to the buyers. I can see how that might be a little bit, uh, you know, flipped because I've been saying, well, on the buyer, you know, on, on the bid side is where the buyers are. But they're taking it that next step further in the sequence saying, so if that's where the buyers are, and you want to short, meaning you want to sell, well then you're going to want to you know, tap the button over here. So that's why I say don't get too wrapped up into that because the way the brokers have things set up is it's very intuitive. At the end of the day, you don't even really need to know about all those dynamics. You just need to think, okay, well if I think the Euro you know, compared to the US dollar, if that exchange rate's going to go down, well then I want to short, which means I want to sell, so just click that button. Now you don't have to sit there and say, all right, yeah, because I want to sell, so I got to find where the buyers are and because this, that, 
we went through all those logic chains just so you could actually see kind of the, the theory of things. But in the practical sense, the brokers do a very good job of making it practical. Because again, if you're thinking, okay, I think the US, I think the Euro is gonna you know, increase in value. And I think that exchange rate's gonna go up. Well, if I think something's gonna go up, then I wanna buy. So, but right here, okay, buy, boom, buy, it's done. You don't have to sit there and think, okay, well, because I wanna buy, where are the sellers at and the seller, none of that, very, very practical when you get right right down into actual, you know, the reality of the situation um, when you're more so trading. I'm not a huge, huge fan of theory, but you know, with this, I wanted to make sure that you understand just the dynamics of everything that's going on. So let's go look over here. Here's another Forex, uh, you know, broker that's actually giving you all sorts of different, uh, you know, currencies all at once. But once again, we will stay focused on the Euro dollar. So again, as far as the currency pairs, well, I mean, you can see this one's giving you all sorts of different ones. So there's, you know, the, uh, you know, the Austra Australia versus United States there, you know, the Euro versus Switzerland, Euro versus the, um, the pound, and so on and so forth. But once again, we'll just stick with the Euro dollar. Now this is a little bit different. Here, again, they're assuming that those first two numbers are the same. You can see right here, they're actually super small. You have 1.36 up here, you have 1.36 right there, and then you just have real estate locations number three, and remember, four, that's gonna be important later. You have real estate locations number three and again at number four right there, which is important. But again, I I don't know why these brokers are doing that. I mean, once again, the three here is the same. The three there is the same. So I, I don't know, maybe I'll email the broker. Say, hey, why, why don't, it doesn't matter though. The point being, you just gotta realize, or you just gotta ask yourself and understand, all right, well, this broker is assuming that either the first two numbers are the same or the first three numbers are the same. This one, once again, those first two numbers they're assuming are the same, so they just make those real small. So the actual you know, quote is right here. The quote that they want you to focus on. Again, in terms of practicality, right here. If you want to buy because you think this is gonna go up, right there, they make it easy. There's the buy button. If you wanna sell because you think this thing is gonna go down, then right there is a sell button. You don't have to think about all the dynamics, it's just buy and sell and there you go, and right from that point, you know, P&L and all that stuff starts to get you know, calculated for you. So that's how that would appear on this broker. And I'm not gonna give you any broker names because brokers are always changing, broker platforms are always changing, that, that way I just wanna focus how to read a quote, how to you know, understand you know, the, the assumptions that are being made and maybe assumptions that aren't being made. If you can understand just those general guidelines, then it doesn't matter what brokers change or what platforms you know, appearances change to, you're still gonna be able to read anything that you come across. So here's our final one, and I don't know about you, but to me, this just seems like, oh, that's such a mess. Why is it such a mess? Well, for this, let me take a step back once again, looking at the euro and dollar, but they don't assume anything. The only thing that they you know, don't assume is the last number, but because they assume that last number, they make it smaller, but they assume everything else is the same. So all these numbers in, I like this one because it does kind of, it makes me appreciate, oh wow, I, I do actually like when brokers assume because I see this and does it really, I mean, do we really need 1.29? to be as big as the other numbers because it's just simply 1.29 over there too. And like I've been saying and kind of suggesting, you can make the argument, do they really need to even be focused on the eight there? Because once again, the eight is the same over here. But with this broker, they leave all those numbers the very same. And in my eyes at least, and this is why, you know, I'm not saying this is bad by any stretch of the imagination. If anything, this creates the perfect example of personal taste, you know, per personal preference, how we view things. But in my mind, it just kind of looks scattered because wait, what? what's going on? What should I be paying attention to? I mean, at the end of the day, that fourth real estate location, both there and there is, is that key number as we'll see in the next video. But you know, this is just another example of how this broker decided to you know, show the market, show the bid versus the ask. But again, in, in terms of practicality, very efficient. If you wanna sell, you click that button. If you wanna buy, then you click that button, and as long as you know when you should be buying and selling, then you're good to go. Again, just to recap, when do you wanna buy? Well, you wanna buy when you wanna enter into a long position. You wanna buy when you wanna exit a short position. You wanna sell when you wanna exit a long position. You wanna sell when you wanna enter a short position. So if you, if you didn't get all that, you can rewind it back and write it down, but I, I've, I've covered that multiple times, um, and that's just you know why it makes it so easy. So um, you know this is the last quote, and then we'll end the video.
but you know, don't be overwhelmed by the, okay, holy crap, so buyers are there and if I wanna sell, I gotta find the buyers and the buyers are looking, you don't have to go through any of that. That was all the theory of things. This is the practical sense of things. Just click the button. If you think that the Euro dollar exchange rate is gonna go up, then click that buy button. There you go. Problem solved. You don't have to sit there and mentally torture yourself going through the, the logic chain of everything because that's that's unnecessary in the heat of battle. Sure, it's nice to kind of know what exactly is going on, you know, the behind the scenes dynamics, but you know, in the heat of battle, if you want to just buy because you think something's going to go up, then just click the buy button. And you know, these, these are three different brokers, but I, I haven't seen a broker yet that does not make it very efficient in terms of wanting to buy or sell, you know, for the exchange rate. So very straightforward on that point in time. So at this point, you know, we're coming right up there on that 30 minute mark. So I don't wanna, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll separate the PIP video into the next one. So we still have a few more things to talk about, but now at this point, you're, you're really, you're getting in the good nitty gritty stuff. You understand what a currency pair is. You now understand what a quote is. You understand who's in the market, how the market's, you know, interacting, you know, how the market is put into an efficient manner, cough, cough, quote, and you understand, you know, kind of, hopefully how you can read a quote, especially in regards to the assumptions that brokers are making. How many decimal points, you know, how many of those real estate locations are they assuming is gonna be the change? And like this one, just sloppy. Maybe you look at this and say, oh wow, that's beautiful. I, I, I see that right away. Then good for you. Again, classic example of what people mean when it's like, you know, trading has a lot of personal taste, personal preference that goes with it. And the way my brain functions, that just looks sloppy when I, you know, I've seen a couple of these other um, broker quotes. So. That is where we stand right now. Like I said, next video, we're gonna start to talk about PIP and I've been hinting at it, but just keep in mind, real estate location number four. That is definitely gonna come into play in the next video.